Now, recently on the group, there's been discussion of a couple guys wanting to uh, add a turntable to the layout, and um, this is uh, a turntable when I, I made. It's a scratch-built unit that I made uh, when I first set up my uh, my layout here. And what I did is I constructed this uh, this oak uh, top piece with the bellows and uh, whatnot, and I had a piece of uh, test equipment at work that was a uh, it was a worm drive um, mechanism that was controlled by stepper motors, and I stripped all that stuff off and got a uh, reversible uh, AC motor and hooked it up to the worm drive. So what I have now is a um, turntable that I can run in either direction. It, it turns at a, a pretty nice pace now. For years, I used it um, without any really positive stop um, to line up the uh, tracks as it went around. I just had to take my best guess as to when to to stop it, and it, there was a bit of uh, extra motion after you release the switch, so the turntable would glide. So um, I had that for a while, and I, it was always in the back of my mind to, uh, to to fix that so it would stop. Um, and line up correctly. And what I ended up doing, I, I bought um, a solenoid on eBay and I made some uh, little stop pieces that the solenoid uh, plunger drops into. So what happens is when you come close to the track then what you do is you release the switch and um, the piece, there's a little bit of momentum left and the piece will glide in. Now the, the plunger is on the solenoid is uh, spring loaded so it, it drops into the little uh, hole in, in the bracket I made and uh, with careful alignment initially it drops in and it, it lines up the track nicely so that the train can go on and off. So uh, what I what I use, uh, I have this, uh, this switch here and it's, it's just a momentary switch that I can move back and forth depending on which way I want the uh, turntable to go. And th the way this works is, uh, I don't know how good this is going to come out, but you turn it till you're almost there, and when you let it go, it, it drops in. You can, it can actually hear it, and it, it locks into position. And uh, it works pretty well, actually, and... Uh, it didn't cost me that much to do, so uh, I'm gonna in a second I'm gonna try and crawl into the layout and see if I can give you a, a picture of what's going on underneath this thing. Now I, I got this uh, this 622 uh, engine here, or 623 I think it is, and uh, this turntable fits uh, all the trains that I ever want to put on it. Um, I built this roundhouse thing here and it holds all the steam engines and you can uh, separately control each track um, by a switch to turn them on and off so th this works uh, pretty good. So um, actually the, the power comes in on the top of this too and it's I, I made a little mechanism so it can pivot you know, 360 degrees. There's no, uh, there's no real stop on this turn. Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll keep going around and around. The only, uh, the only thing is, like, I get a little sign there. That's the side of the turntable that that lines up with the tracks, and that, that's the side that engages with the um, little stops I made. So you have to just keep that in mind when you when you use this thing. Okay, I don't know how good this is going to come out, but uh, this is the motor. I have attached to this uh, this drive unit up here. And what this is is, is a, a circular piece with a uh, kind of a ring gear on it, and the the motor here drives a worm gear. And the turntable itself sets sets just sets into the uh, center of this this piece here, and it just uh, it slips. I mean, you can you can spin the turntable independent of this thing, so. If the turntable ever hangs up, you don't do any damage to anything. Now, up here is the, the solenoid I have. And these aluminum pieces here are the stops. And what they are is just some aluminum L bracket I made. 
and what I've done is I've made slots in them so you can adjust them to get the alignment perfectly. And I got this uh, solenoid. It's, it's a constant duty solenoid. It's fairly heavy duty. And I made a plunger for it that's, uh, I don't know if you can see it, spring loaded. So I'm going to have my assistant uh, operate this for a minute and you can see how it works. So go ahead and turn it. Keep, keep going. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, release. I'll come back the other way. Release. And you can see that the plunger, if you if you uh, do it in the right spot, drops in and it, it locks the uh, it locks the turntable in position. It still takes a little bit of uh, technique, but it's it's a lot more forgiving. And and once you get used to it, you can you can easily hit it every time. So that that's that's what I did to make a turntable for this thing. The total cost for this turntable was uh, was basically zero. Um, I think, well, that's not true. I, I had to buy the uh, the little gear motor thing, and that, that was probably like $27 or something. It wasn't that much money. The rest of the stuff I, I scrounged up. Um, the solenoid was, was cheap, too. So let's say let's say the total cost of this thing was like $50 or something. So uh, it's worked good all these years. So maybe give you some idea of what you could do to build your own.